Hello and welcome back to the channel. We are just a couple days away from the draft. It's actually two days from now. And I'm going to be doing my final Eagle 7 round mock draft. You guys love these. So we're on a different website this time. I'm going to the draft network just so I get some different players falling out and some different options for a lot of the other picks in this draft. We're going to jump right into it with the Eagles here at pick 12. Now, if the board falls out like this, we got J.C. Horn and Sertan, the top two corners off the board. I'm not a fan of taking a risk on Farley. Did it with Sidney Jones. Don't want to take that risk again. Top two receivers. We also have Devontae Smith on the board. Mac Jones, please. Eagles, don't do this to me. And then there's a lot of talk about Quiddy Pay and the Eagles. But I would honestly probably not be an Eagles fan anymore if the Eagles decide to go Quiddy Pay at 12. If we trade back, I'm still going to be pissed if we trade back and get Quiddy Pay. But it makes more sense if we at least trade back and get him. 12 is way too high for a developmental D-end at a position we don't really need. When you have the Heisman winner, Devontae Smith here, I think this is a pretty easy pick. Here, if the board falls out like this, the Eagles get yourself a great receiver. He played with Jalen Hurts. I mean, I think that's just an easy pick. You need to get weapons. We'll attack some of the other positions later on in the draft, but Devontae Smith is a hell of a player. I'm not too worried about the weight concerns. I was worried when we were picking at six. I was more worried about Devontae because there was a risk factor with him for sure. But at 12, I feel a lot more comfortable taking Devontae Smith than I would at six. Now we're back up on the board at pick 37. Now Jason Oway in the second, if we did want to attack edge, would be a decent, very, just a freak athlete. I wouldn't be upset with Jason Oway. Landon Dickerson, you could look at getting Jason Kelsey's replacement here at pick 36. That's not a bad option either. Um, uh, Corner class, I, I want to attack corner early, but the only guys I like maybe playing on the outside, Asante Samuel could... He's a bit smaller. He still has the traits to play outside. Kelvin Joseph could. Um, Fetty Melifanu and Tyson Campbell could also play on the outside. I'm not a huge fan of any of those in the beginning of the second, though. Um, one thing I really love that the Eagles should look into if we could is try and jump back into the end of the first if some of the corners... Like, if Greg Newsom falls, I don't think he will. But trade back in. If we get a corner at pick 12 and someone like Terrence Marshall is there near the end of the first, I wouldn't be upset... Get, getting rid of maybe one of our third round picks to jump up from the second round back into the first to get one of those players. But with the board falling out, I'm going to go Jason Oway from Penn State. I think get another edge rusher. We have Brandon Graham and Josh Sweat, but Brandon Graham's on a lot of money. This might be his last year. Josh Sweat's improving. Derek Barnett's only here for one more year. I really doubt we re-sign re him. Plus, if we get a guy like Jason Oway, we won't have to re-sign him. He's a freak athlete. All the physical tools you could want. He definitely needs to grow a little bit and... Definitely need some good coaching to be able to get him to be the superstar that he could be. But I really like the Eagles coaching staff. We've shown that we can we've shown that we can develop DNs, especially a guy like Josh Sweat, another guy that was really raw coming out of college. And we've Josh Sweat's been doing incredible things for us. So I think that's a good kind of comparison to talents. Ooh, and coming into the third round, we I was looking at Jabril Cox that whole time. Really hoping he would be there. But Jabril Cox goes the pick before us. That's a rough one. Looking at how the board is still available. If we look at corners here, then we do have two third round picks. Um, Afeti Melifon was still here. Um, that could definitely be him. Tyson, Tyson Campbell I'm a little more worried about. He was really bad in a lot of the change of direction drills and stuff at, the, at his pro day. Which is not something you want from corners. Change of direction is really important. Um, another guy, I like Israel, not even going to try that last name, out of South Carolina. He played opposite J.C. Horn. I like him later on. He could be a good scheme fit. Another just athlete, just freaky athlete. Fetsi Melifanu is definitely on the board here, one of the top guys. Eagles are looking at Jamar Johnson. I love Jamar Johnson. He could definitely be the pick here with Anthony Harris only on a one-year deal and Rodney McLeod only getting older. And I believe he only has one, maybe two years left on his deal, so... That could definitely Richie Grant um, is right up there with Jamar Johnson. It's really pick your poison. Jamar Johnson's just a ball hawk. He's always around the ball. It's insane how much production he has with pass breakups and picks. And Richie Grant's your classic. You know he can play deep safety. He can play slot corner. Kind of play whatever. Looking at linebackers, not a much. I really. You know what? I'm gonna go. 
I'm gonna go Jamar Johnson here. We could get, we could we I believe we were one of the lowest teams in picks last year. Our defense was just not creating turnovers. Get yourself a ball hawk and Jamar Johnson who will come in day one and get you turnovers from the from the start. That's what we need. Someone who can make a difference and get some turnovers. So I would love that pick if we can get him at the beginning of the third. Now I definitely still want to attack corner. We definitely have a this. Israel Makuamu is still here. You know, I'm going to get him. I feel like he's one of the few guys that can actually play outside corner later in the draft. And we need an outside corner. It might be a little... I don't think it's too much of a reach. But we need a corner. And I'm going to get a position in need right there in the third for us. We helped out our secondary a lot. We have already gotten a receiver. Let's see what we can go ahead and do here in the later rounds. I still want to attack some O-linemen. A linebacker if one falls. Um, and we could even use more receivers just because you, I think we should, we, I could see the Eagles easily taking two receivers in this draft. So it kind of depends on who's there. Moving up at pick 123, we're here in the fourth round. Cam Sample stands out right away. Uh, Marvin Wilson is actually really interesting. We don't need another D tackle, but he was a guy who was very productive, had a great junior retro sophomore the year before he was really good it might have actually just been his true sophomore year really good then didn't look that good this past year not incredible physical traits but he's had that production that we've seen marvin wilson throwing him he doesn't have to play right away he can sit behind hargrave and cox and then if we move on from cox or hargrave in the future he can play it i wouldn't be too upset there but we already have attack defense a lot dylan moses could be a good pick here in the fourth round um, we already attacked corner. I don't want to go right back to corner right away. We could definitely use a running back. Let's see what the running back board's looking like. I really like Khalil Herbert. When's our next pick is going to... I can't even see. I believe our next pick is not till the 5th. So I really want to take Khalil Herbert then. I'm, just, I'm going to hold on to that Khalil Herbert. And hopefully he's there with our next pick and not take him here. Looking at everyone else who's available... I think I'm going to go Dylan Moses. I really, I think our defense definitely needs some help. Linebackers, a position of need. Let's go ahead and see what other linebackers here, just in case. Yeah, no, Dylan Moses is going to be the guy I'm going to go with. Had some great productive use. I mean, he was a consensus first round pick before his injury. Didn't have the greatest year this past year. Coming off of the injury, but I mean, when you're taking a guy in the fourth round, taking a guy that went to Alabama, had some high production in his career, that's not a bad bet to go ahead and take in the fourth round. Now, sitting here in the fifth round, let's see if our guy's still here. Cleo Herbert, he's one of my favorite prospects later in the round. Just great all-around solid running back, great balance. We're going to go ahead and snag him to pair with Miles Sanders here at pick 150 in the fifth round. I think I had him in my last Eagles seven round two. Cleo Herbert is like, he's probably, I guess, looking at the running backs, he's probably running back five or six for me on my board behind the two North Carolinas, Etienne, and I'm just totally blanking, Najee Harris. It's really between him and Trey Sermon, I believe, for that kind of five, six spot. But I personally like him just a little more, and Trey Sermon was gone, so it helped us out. Now back on the board in the sixth round at pick 109. And I see my guy Cornell Powell. I really like both of the Clemson receivers. I, I think they're both going to be really good, solid role players in the NFL, which is great, which is what you want in the later rounds. You want some some role players who will come in. Cornell Powell is a great blocker. And I know that coming in, the coaching staff, Nick Sirianni and them, they love their receivers to be able to block well. So Cornell Powell would definitely be a great option you know, I'm going to go Cornell Powell. I, I really like him. Like I said, the blocking is important to the Nick Sirianni and his coaches coming in. So I could definitely see this as a potential target for the Eagles, especially in the sixth round. Played at a big program, made some big plays. Good blocker, can get open. You know, it's just he's not going to be I, – I would never see him as a top receiver, number one receiver. Doesn't have that upside. But he has a lower – he has a higher floor, and he's going to come in and be productive and get some snaps in year one. Now we're moving up to our back-to-back -back picks at the end of the sixth round here. The hard thing with Eagles mock drafts is we have so many late-round picks to be able to pick so many guys. Like, as you can see, we still have four more picks right here in this short end of the draft. I'm going to go ahead with this pick. I'm going to take Tay Gowan from UCF. A lot of people, some people really high, some people low on him. He doesn't have a lot of tape. Only played one year at UCF after transferring from somewhere else. I think it was somewhere in maybe Miami, Ohio. 
Um, but he doesn't have a lot of tape. But he's one of the other guys that could be a true outside corner. We have some good nickel corners on our roster. We need that true outside guy. Takeout is another guy that has the traits to be an outside corner. So that I'm happy taking a risk with him in the sixth round. Back up on the board at pick 225. I like some of the corners and receivers here, but we've already attacked a lot of corner receivers, so I don't think we need to attack that anymore. Some of the positions, we could definitely use a tight end if we look at who's still on the board. One of my favorite guys later in the round is Luke Farrell from Ohio State. He's a great blocker, another guy that, you know, if you can get a tight end that can block, he'll automatically be playing in your first year and they play more because he can go out there in those 12 personnel sets and just block. We don't need a number one. We need a number two tight end that can come in and make plays. So I definitely like Luke Farrell there. He's definitely a good option. You know, I'm going to go with Luke Farrell. Get yourself a block. He might be a little bit of a reach, but get yourself a blocking tight end. If sounds like Zach Ertz might be traded on in the draft. Um, that's what a lot of the rumors are coming out so if he's gone we definitely need a tight end two behind him so get yourself a great blocker who will come in and produce right away behind Dallas Goddard now we have two more picks in the draft I believe pick 234 and pick 240 we haven't attacked O-line yet and I would like to the, the only thing I feel with this O-line class I feel like drops off a complete cliff after the second third round there's some guys that will maybe sneak in the beginning of the third, but after that, I think it just hits a complete cliff. And I don't really like any of these guys. I guess there's some guys that you take a risk on. But looking at who's still available, it's and it's also hard. I, I don't really look at a lot of seventh round tackles, so <laughs> it's hard. Sorry if you expect me to look at seventh round tackle tape, but I just... Haven't looked into that. Although here I do see Chris Rumpf here still at Duke. Some people are pretty high on him. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take him. He seems like the best value pick here of guys I think could make plays. He's a bit of an undersized guy. I believe he has pretty short arms. But he was he had some production. And I think he, he's a guy that if you take in the seventh round, take a guy with some upside that you think could be good. And he's probably the best player I've seen on the board. Now here at pick... 240, I believe this is our last pick in the draft. Um, one Dimitri, Dimitri Felton is a just... I'm surprised he's still on the board. I would love to pick him. I just feel like we've attacked a lot of skill positions on offense. So I don't know how I feel about that. But he definitely should not still be available here in the seventh round. Definitely the best player. Trey Norwood and DJ Daniel. Two good corners that I would definitely love to attack. Trey Norwood's kind of like a corner safety Kind of like Jalen Mills, not necessarily how he plays. He's this really slim guy. But we could pair him. The two slim Reapers could get paired together with Devontae Smith. If we wanted to, he could play safety or corner and just be a jack-of-all-trades for us. Tamori and Terry, really like him at receiver. I'd be surprised if he's still here again. Um, Terry and Jackson, that's if you want to take a risk on the physical traits. We've already taken a lot of D-linemen. Um, so personally, I'm not going to go there. Lamont Wade's an interesting process. I think, you know, I'm just going to go best player available. This is the seventh round. You don't hit on a lot of seventh rounds. I'm just going to take Demetric Felton. He's the best player available on the board still. So I'm just going to go ahead and take him and move on. Because in the seventh, in the, once you get past the third round, the hit rates are so low on these players. It's just a shot in the dark. So I love just getting guys with physical traits and high upsides. And just hoping something happens with them. Because it's really so hard to just... It's it's so hard. It's so hard to hit on first and second rounders. Nonetheless, when you're getting out of fourth and fifth, it's almost impossible. That's why I think the Eagles should try and use some of these late round picks to jump up in these early rounds and get more value in the early rounds. But this is going to be the mock draft. Let me know what you guys thought of it. I thought this turned out pretty well. If the Eagles can come out with Devontae Smith, Jason Owe, Jamar Johnson, the, really these first like six picks. Those could all be home run picks. I love all of these picks. Devontae Smith, great in the first round. Jason Owe would be a solid steal. I believe he's definitely going to be a first rounder. But if he's there in the second, I would happily take him. Hopefully you guys look forward to the draft on Thursday. I can't wait. I'll see you guys after the draft on Thursday. Get some more different position ranking videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.